Hi, I'm Mike Okuda. And I'm Denise Okuda. And, and this, this is, is the Shuttle Pod, Pod Show. Show. Uh, you don't want to stress the actors by saying, that's the button you push. Mm. Because it, because if I if I tell you that, mm. first of all, you're not going to remember. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm actually not going to remember. You specifically. He, he was pointing at Kana. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Shuttle Pod Show. Today we have very special guests, Michael and Denise Okuda. We'll be answering your fan questions, doing some Star Trek trivia, finding ourselves on Connor's remote island, and much more. As always, our Patreon members get a full extended version of this episode. I'm Erica LaRose, but before we move on, we have a special message from Liz Klukowski. Like, subscribe, and enjoy... I literally can't say the one. Like, subscribe, and join us on Patreon. It's too yeah, many words. When you look at me, you nail it. No. <laughs> you gotta look at the camera. One more time. <laughs> like, subscribe, and join us on Patreon. Aww, thanks, Liz. Thanks, Liz. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Liz. Uh, did and you it's... shoot Andy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and right. now your hosts, Connor Trenier and Dominic Keating. Hi, hey, 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 guys. Hey, How's it going? Hey, we were hard. here yesterday, so it's hard yeah. to say how was your week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> how did you sleep? Uh, yeah, not bad for me. You know, uh, it's always fitful. Yeah. <laughs> Dodgers won for you. I, I, you know, I watched a couple of the innings, and uh, they were four zip down, and uh, I thought, you know what. I'm going to watch three episodes of Star Trek, Ooh. and I did. I watched uh, The Tin Man and uh, Best of Both Worlds 1 and 2. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, treks and trekkers, uh, in our, well, now Red Thrones, <laughs> we have what I consider titans of the technical industry um, in our profession. And if there's a Hall of Fame in Star Trek, um, I would say uh, next to Gene Roddenberry, it would be these two mm -hmm. uh, with their impact on what uh, the franchise has been and what they've done for it. And uh, it's a thrill, and I mean a real thrill, to have Michael and Denise Okuda on our show today. Yeah. Thank you so okay. much. For Thank you, guys. So, where do we start? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's, I mean, there really, I mean, you, you are literally, you, the lineage is, uh, is really, as he says, is Titan. Uh, how did you meet? Because, yeah, I know, I know, Mike, Mike, you, you were kind of, you were into this stuff. Were, were you into this stuff, Denise? You were as well. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. You, yeah. You're full on, oh, yeah. were you? Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I grew up with Star Trek. I right. love Star Trek. Um, when I was five years old, I I looked at the stars and said I wanted to study those. Um, problem is, I don't do well with chemistry, physics, or math. So that kind of um, yeah, that's, that kind of eliminated breaker. that. Um, Welcome to the party. Yeah. 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 So, I can look like I can work a computer. Yeah. So I found a different path, but um, how I met Mike, uh, Mike was working on Star Trek The Next Generation, and I had friends in production at the time I was working as a registered nurse. And because I um, knew Star Trek very well, and I also worked in the medical field, um, I was brought up to have a meeting with production designer Herman Zimmerman and illustrators Andy Probert and Rick Sternbach. Right. And we had a, a, a chat about what I saw in the future um, in sick bay and, and so forth and so on. Right. And then they took me up to the art department and I met people up there. But I noticed one particular um, desk and bulletin board. And I noticed a little maquette, a little puppet, of a character by the name of Max Headroom. Oh, now, in oh, the 80s, yeah. Yeah. there was yeah. a uh, television series. Yeah. It started in the UK, it but did. then here yeah. in um, called Max Headroom. It was so and revolutionary, it was that show. Brilliant. It yeah. was way ahead of its time. It really was. And I loved it. And I said, whose desk is this? Right. And it was Mike. <laughs> so we like to say that Max Headroom introduced us. How did, oh, uh, I love that. How did Max that's Headroom fun. get into your sphere then? Because, I mean, we didn't have, you know, streaming or we had the Pepsi commercials. Or, there was a show, there was a brief show that there didn't was, really there, make it. Well, there was that weekly television show. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and it was all over MTV. So Right. And I was at in, in those days. I would st I literally studied MTV to uh, uh, to get an idea of popular culture and film technique. Uh, really? Yeah. No kidding. 
Wow. So, because you grew up in Tokyo, right? No, I grew. Uh, I was born in Tokyo. Born in Tokyo. Um, my uh, uh, my father was serving in the Air Force at the time, but I grew up in Hawaii. Ah, and you went to uh, you went to university in Hawaii too, didn't you? Uh, and you studied communications. Was that on Oahu at Manoa? Or? Yeah, I went to yeah. University of Hawaii at Manoa. Right, right, right. Uh, got got my degree there, and I did a lot of uh, community theater, a lot of uh, low budget television commercials. And then I got a job doing uh, 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 graphics for a major medical center there. Right. Yeah, so you had a, you had a penchant for the to be in the industry even at a young age. You you thought this was going to be a, a yeah, part. But, but I was also uh, as as Denise was. I was a space geek from a, a very young age. So that certainly drew me to Star Trek. I have read that you, you to this day you you know hands down the original series is your favorite and very much go to yeah. both of you. Mm, hands yeah. down. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Right, uh, Kirk did it first. <laughs> well, the, the original, I found that whatever series you watch when you're a child it tends to yeah. be sure. your favorite. Yeah. Right. The gateway yeah. trek. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The gateway yeah. trek. Yeah. 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 Exactly. You guys were my gateway trek. Really? Yeah. Enterprise, yeah. Uh, yeah. There you go. You you that age is ages us, doesn't it? But I'll take it. <laughs> so uh, um, you go to the art department. You see this desk yes. with uh, Max Headroom. Right. And then what? And so, I started chatting with Michael. And then I realized, I, and little did I know that Herman Zimmerman, production designer, and his wife were trying to play matchmaker. I did not know this, oh. um, but they were. And... Mike and I just started chatting, and I invited him to my house to have you know, barbecue and so forth and so on. He was working seven days a week, and I'm going, that's nuts. Um, right. But, you know, what happened to me later? I'm working seven, seven days, days a week. week. Um, <laughs> and just one thing led to another, and within six months, we were engaged. How wonderful. Wow. That's really something. It really is. God bless Trek. It brings, you know, it's the stories are, you know, they go on and on. Uh, so... Uh, you started on the film Star Trek Four, didn't you? That was your first. And how did you get that job? What was that story? Um, like I said, I was working corporate graphics and and uh, and community theater and very low budget television. Right. But as a Star Trek fan, I watched, of course, all the original series, and I watched Star Trek the Motion Picture. And if you look on the bridge of the Enterprise, there are these round computer screens. Mm, and yeah, yeah, yeah. If you look at all, they'll know. <laughs> yeah, if you look at all present computer screens, they're they're rectangular or square. Right. And it's appropriate because the graphics are rectangular based. Right. So to have a rectangular graphic on a round screen to me didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. So I said, what kind of graphic should go on that? Right. So I, d I did a bunch of sketches and I, s I sent it to uh, Gene Roddenberry's office. So you sent, pitched. Yeah, yeah. I, I, s I sent it to Harv Bennett and a bunch of other people. And one day I get a phone call from Ralph Winter, who was associate producer on Star Trek Three, saying, uh, we like your stuff, um, but we're already staffed up on Star Trek Three. But if we ever do a Star Trek 4, I'll give you a, I'll give you a call. And, in, you know, the philosophy or the, the saying that you have to know someone in Hollywood. Yeah. yeah. I knew nobody. I was, I was the guy who sent in a resume and, and, right. and a portfolio. All right. Were you still, uh, were you here in LA? Or no, I was in Los Angeles. I was in Hawaii. You were in Hawaii. Oh. So I thought, well, that's the nicest brush off you'll ever get. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and to my complete shock, two years later, uh, Ralph calls me again and says, hey, we're doing Star Trek Four. Uh, do you want to work on it? And that's something. And of course, he didn't have to ask twice. Right, right. That's how I was it. I mean, that's my little story. With uh, I met uh, Rick Berman and I guess the the gang for a de uh, an episode of Voyager, and didn't I thought I was going to get it. It, was, it went so swimmingly well and didn't. And I was like, oh, fucking and two years later, yeah, my manager called and went, and it was, it was exactly, and they remembered me and brought me in, and it was bang. Suddenly, I was Malcolm Reed. Do you think they uh, they didn't cash you in Voyager because they precisely no Rick came when we were shooting Shuttlepod One, uh, he was taking Sir Patrick around. It was shooting Nemesis Next Door on Seventeen. He was so proud of this little episode that uh, was this two hander in space, and he just told me then that you know I remembered you from all those from two years ago. I had your photograph on my desk all this time. I was like, wow, you wow. you'd never know, do you? Yeah, so so you come on board, uh, they like your graphics, you do Star Trek four, mm -hmm. and then do they is do they get you straight into next generation the, the TV series straight away? Well, what happened was, you know, we you wrap Star Trek four, 
and there was a cast and crew screening on Los Angeles. And I and I'm figuring Star Trek Four is my is my my big foray into Hollywood. That's uh, that's uh, I'm never going to work again in, in the industry, so I might as well enjoy it as much as I can. What made you think that then? I mean, because at the end of every job, you think you're never going to get hired again. Well, that's yeah. very true. We know that feeling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and there, in some cases, yeah. <laughs> well, you're here. Uh, you've done third. I'm God knows. Anyway, yeah, no, carry on. So there was a there was a cast and crew screening at the Directors Guild, and um, uh, they had already announced Star Trek: uh, The Next Generation, and because I very rarely came to Los Angeles on the mainland. I, uh, when I came in, I had also called uh, Neil Rodas up at ILM, and I said, hey, you asked, you invited me to visit. Can, can I come by? Mm. And he said, sure. So at the cast and crew screening, Gene says, uh, what are you doing next? I said, and I thought he meant literally, what are you doing tomorrow? So I said, I'm, I'm going to go up to uh, ILM. And Gene Roddenberry, who always knew exactly what to say, Said, well, I hope you be- before you accept the position there, you'll give us a ch- uh, a shot. Really? Oh, well, I never. So from the man himself, how was he? I mean, I love hearing people that who met him, and uh, was he was just a gent, wasn't he? Like any of us, he was an imperfect person. Yeah. He certainly oh. certainly did things that he, uh, he would not have been proud of, but I never found him anything other than than supportive and appreciative. And uh, when I wanted to. To do something different, he always listened, and he didn't necessarily would he wouldn't necessarily do what I suggested, mm. but he was always receptive. I I suggested a change in the script for the pilot episode of Next Generation, and he uh, uh, he called up and said, "Great, let, let's do that." They didn't end up doing it, but the, uh, he called and said that he was receptive to the yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, when was, they were trying to what design, was that? Do you remember what that what that sent that the, the, the note was? Um, in the pilot episode, when they're going to separate the uh, the saucer, mm. I said uh, there was a lot of di- dialogue that says, "Stand by for saucer separation. We're, we're going to separate the saucer." Okay, so when we separate the saucer, we're going to do this. Uh, they, they really they nailed that. <laughs> yeah, and bang I, that. And I thought, well, they're spending all this money on this cool visual effect. Why are you telling me? Right. Why don't you call it? Yeah, what we're battle for. configuration or something. Mm. Look at you. And so, so that we're already see it, coming up with the with the tech the, the jargon as it were. Yeah. But for the purpose of of concealing what's going to happen, so when you see it visually, it's it's, it's surprising. Right. right. And uh, Gene called and said, I, "I like the idea." They ended up not doing it for a reason that I don't know. That's awesome narrative instinct, by the way. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why don't take the surprise away from me by telling me? Don't what's tell about it. To show it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And so, then so. You two come together, you get engaged, and how do you begin working together? Uh, well, I was helping out on Star Trek V. I was working in on the weekends. If I worked in the hospital every other weekend, I would come You're up. still nursing. Yes, I'm still point, working yeah. at a hospital in Orange County. And I would come up on the weekends, and I would... Um, uh, help out in the art department. Michael was working seven days a week, and if I wanted to see him, I needed to go right. where he was. <laughs> so I went there, and he sorry, he started teaching me, and I started, you know, helping out a little bit, and mostly, you know, I was running, um, I was um, running animation over to be converted over at Warner Brothers that they could use as playback, and I was doing, I was helping out, mm-hmm. and um, then I, we got married, and moved up here and um, I was hired to work as a PA on Star Trek VI, the feature part of Star Trek VI. Production assistant. Production assistant. And um, so I did that, worked my tail off. I mean, it was, I learned a lot. I mean, you can imagine going from the medical field into the entertainment field and working. uh, I learned a lot. And um, when that was done, Herman Zimmerman, production designer, um, said he wanted to hire me, although... Did you nix it? <laughs> no, no. Um, when Deep Space Nine was starting, we're, it meant there was going to be two Star Treks at the same time. Yeah. So um, a studio VP called me out to his office, and I'm going, oh, I'm in trouble. And they said, well, we want you to work on both shows. Yeah. Now, that was quite a... Because they didn't like to cross-pollinate, did they? No, they didn't. There was only like five of us that, part were, of the law that of, worked on two shows at yeah, the same well, time. Would, they wouldn't do it, no. Yeah. It, was a, it was a strange thing. Yeah. Yeah, very you diff- don't talk to you. 
You, yeah, you know, very different teams. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and uh, so oh you, yeah, we're very aware of that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I bet. What was, the, what was that? What was that policy? I don't really know. Don't want to say. <laughs> you know, your football team is better than my football team. Right. I mean, it's just yeah. it was. Right. Well, right. on I'm sure you ran into the you no. Know, uh, this, this is before Enterprise, mm -hmm. but if you worked on D Space Nine, you knew that Voyager was getting a, a higher budget than you. If you worked on Voyager, you knew that D Space Nine was getting more money. There than was you. healthy competition, uh, right? But right. we were working on both, so it's like. Right. No, and you know we're working on two shows, and we work with two crews, and we didn't have any problems at all. I mean, yeah. but there was a healthy competition. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, we didn't have that. We thought we were going to be the next film crew, and you know that Scott being the captain, that he was a natural you know, fit for making the movies, and we loved that show. Oh uh, God. Enterprise, yeah. we learned so much doing D Space Nine and Voyager and Next Generation. So when it came down to enter do Enterprise. Uh, we really knew what we were doing. We had an amazing team, and th those yeah. sets and those shows were just stunning. They were fantastic. They were stunning. The world changed. It had nothing yeah. to do with Enterprise. Right. I mean, I firmly believe that. The world changed. <laughs> I agree with you. And um, we should have gone seven years, yeah. and um, we were, quite frankly, shocked that we didn't, as mm. you know, you all probably were taken aback. I mean, we found out that we were canceled on the internet. So did Rick ever see Deep Space Nine in any respect? Was that, was that, yeah, he was, was, he... was it was, it was his license plate yeah. on yeah. his Jaguar. Yeah. Oh, was it? DS9. Yeah. 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 I don't, I don't yeah. remember yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Um, so I was asked to, uh, report to the office of a Paramount VP and I'm going, Oh my God, I'm in trouble. <laughs> but Is he wearing leather shoes? And I was going to say, <laughs> we had a mess. <laughs> Mary told the story about Brad showing up. He always wore tennis shoes, yeah. but when yes. someone was getting fired, he wore leather shoes. Yeah. That oh, oh, so that's, that's <laughs> terrible. Jeans. But the brogues the, 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 the came out. Oh, so that, 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 that I didn't need to notice. <laughs> So you go out. So and and he says we're doing we're doing an, another Star Trek at the same time, and we want you to work on both. And he's uh, and he said, what would it take to get you to work on both? And I and I know he, what he expected me to say. I, I want a fat raise. Did, did you? I was going to say, did you push the piece of paper across the table? <laughs> no. I, uh, 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 Denise had worked on on D Space Nine as a production assistant, and I knew she I knew how much she enjoyed it. So I said, hire my wife. I worked as a production designer, a production What a match. And Six. it was, yeah. Excuse. There's not a lot of guys in Hollywood awesome. that would say that, you know. Let, that, let, let, let's go back. Uh, uh, Denise had worked <laughs> as, a, as a production assistant on uh, Star Trek VI. Yeah. And so, uh, so she had the experience. And I said, well, hire my wife. And, and, I, and I knew that for good reason, this is against a lot of corporate policies. Mm, mm. Yes, but it's dangerous, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It, it, and I and I and I get that. But yeah. to their considerable credit, the only question they asked was, "Can she do the job?" And I looked at me. I said, "Yes, she mm -hmm. can do the job because she, because she could. All right. She had the experience." All right. I was going to ask about. We've had a few people on who have begun their careers as a PA uh, on Star Trek. And what is it about being a PA on Star Trek that there seems to be at least you're an example. Uh, Terry was an example. Mary is an example mm. of, you know, what what is it in the process or what is it about the uh, community uh, of Star Trek that helps facilitate someone growing within that world? Yeah, I think that um, when you start as a PA, you have a golden opportunity to suck knowledge from everybody. And I think the community and the people in production were extremely generous with their time. Um, I, I think it was a, um, a nurturing environment. And, mm. you, I mean, and if you knew how to work hard, and it didn't matter if it was making the best cup of coffee, you know, at the beginning, just to keep people happy or doing and finding an employee that is responsible is golden. Mm -hmm. It really is. You, I mean, you have people out there that may know the job. But if you find somebody that has a good work ethic and is um, responsible, you know, hire that person. Keep them around. Yeah. Yeah. The best PA we ever had on Deep Space Nine was uh, Gene Roddenberry's son, Rod Roddenberry. God bless. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Over the over the years, yeah. we had occasionally had uh, had. Reason to hire 
executive children and officers and relatives of executives, and that's almost always. <laughs> that's, that's I know where this is going. Yes. <laughs> a, a lot of it's a lot of such kid. people have <laughs> have a bit of an entitlement. Yes. Where is he? Well, he's napping. Yes. yes. Rod this is my second cousin, no. <laughs> Rod Rod Roddenberry <laughs> made us a different flavor of coffee Rod every was amazing. every oh, that's day. Awesome. He. He, he declared Thursdays to be pizza month, and he would get on his bicycle, and he'd go do little things. And theaters. he would invite the Voyager art department people over to the DS9 art department, and we would have pizza together. Oh, we so talked about... Juliet. Yeah, we talked about we talked about friendly competition and Capulets and the Montagues. And the Montagues, yes. Wasn't that bad, guys? Who doesn't like pizza? <laughs> well, Paris is dead. <laughs> yeah. That was a thing, wasn't it? That was awful. Uh, anyway, yeah. you could administer the injection. Yeah, I could. Um, anyway, he was the best PA we ever had, and God bless. Um, he was. He was How great. old was he like, about then? In that, in that, was he in his twenties? Well, we've known him since he was a baby, but um, uh, he must have been in his twenties. Yeah, yeah. He must have been. Yeah. He's, it's, it's it's fabulous what he's done uh, carrying the torch. Yeah. Uh, since his mum and dad gone, and he really has. It's because uh, not you know he didn't have to, and uh, and it, it's been really it, yeah. He's, he's something else, Rod. We want to get him on the show soon. You're coming on the show soon, Rod. Um, <laughs> we'll make the coffee. Yeah. <laughs> You're buying the pizza. Yeah. <laughs> That's good because it's not in our budget. <laughs> so, uh, so the evolution of uh, you two as a team working together. You know, uh, we we know you as just you two showing up and explaining and well things I never understood. Um, but when when was the merging of of your two talents uh, really did that come into focus? Well, one of the uh, when when Denise started, she was uh, uh, she was a graphic artist, but it became very clear fairly early on in D Space Nine that I was not doing a great job of organizing the video playback and all all the video screens. That's a tough one. Yeah, <laughs> it's a full time job. It, yeah, yeah. Will tell you. Yeah. And so Denise kind of leaped up and said, "I can probably do that." Wow. How did you know how hmm. to do that? I'm very good at organizing, right. and I use that in my medical profession and and I and just in life in general. I'm very good at organizing, and it sounded like fun. I really didn't know the first thing about the technical aspect of it, but I can learn that. And so I just said, "Let me try it. Let me do that." And I got to think that the the, you know, the the technical aspect in those days was quite rudimentary, wasn't it? I mean. <laughs> Well, By the time it, Ben Betts got to do our stuff, I mean, it, it, but well, know. we got so lucky by having um, Ben. Um, Jim Munson was on um, uh, Deep Space Nine, and uh, Ben Betts uh, came in for Voyager and Enterprise, um, and some of the feature films. Uh, you know, yeah. and 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 also uh, at the very beginning of Deep Space Nine, uh, we had a video supervisor who. Uh, mm. Who actually became uh, Denise's mentor, uh, Liz, Liz Radley. Radley. Yeah. Uh, who uh, and by today's standards, yes, the technology was was primitive, but at at the time at it was time. cutting edge and it was yes. mysterious and it was it uh, it, it was finicky. It was it was worse than that connector there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Is he still on? That's a <laughs> shot at our camera. Uh, for those of you trying to figure out what he's talking about, our camera has been giving us crap today. And yeah, my camera. It's Dominic's camera. <laughs> well, of course. Dominic's I'll, camera is on. They'll screen. hear more about this later. <laughs> <laughs> but the, uh, Liz was. Uh, uh, very generous with her expertise. Yes, she was. She was very generous, and she supported me, and she was my mentor. And I, to this day, I thank her because it. I started doing that for Deep Space Nine, and then it just continued. And Mike and I, and there were about five other people um, that worked uh, two series and a feature every other year, and we did that for many, many years. Mm. How we did it, I don't know. Uh, I mean, we were. Um, and we wrote books occasionally. And we and yeah. we wrote books, and we did. CD-ROMs and um, we <laughs> you're were, prolific. <laughs> we were consumed, but it was wonderful because we were married and we were on the same page and we enjoyed doing all this stuff most of the time, and so it just worked out. And um, even to this day, we choose to work together. Mm -hmm. We have worked on different projects separately, but um, we we really do choose to work together. 
That's and, awesome. And we strive to do that. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a testament because you know, uh, I'm sure sometimes you know the the deadlines must be pretty intense. And <laughs> yeah, um, do you ever fight about it? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no. no. And people do ask us yeah. because. Um, I have this well, I have this philosophy. When we're on the job, I acquiesce to Michael's genius and I happen to be very prejudiced, but I think he's a genius. Mm -hmm. So I have no problem mm -hmm. it at work following his lead, doing what he had, he would like Except to. when it's wrong. She 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 doesn't <laughs> I will raise it. Yes, I will. But we don't argue about it because I now at home it's the opposite. I am in command of the home. And, but yes. It's a balance. Yeah, it's a balance, yeah. It's a delicate balance. Yeah. Um, yeah. Where are you from, Denise? Um, Los Angeles. Oh, you are? Yeah. yeah. Oh, great. Cool. Oh, you're an LA girl. Yeah. Whereabouts? Um, I lived in the San Fernando Valley in Woodland Hills as I was growing up. Right. Moved to Orange County for a couple of years, went to college, and then moved back when I married him. Oh. So how would you get there? Would you take the 101s? Oh, for okay. <laughs> <laughs> we were doing some promos earlier. And, um, I, I love the, the Californians. Yeah. To, to Evan. Um, the, the graphics between DS9 and Voyager, and I'm trying to think, because God knows I've been watching a lot of Trek, I, I'm trying to think of what difference, you know, how different they were. were they, are they very different looks? Um, you know, the acudograms, as it were, from both those shows? Well, on... Uh, on Deep Space Nine, we had two basic looks. We had the Starfleet stuff, which I tried very hard to keep as consistent with what we had done in Next Generation. Mm. But then we had the uh, the Cardassian things, which on one hand, you're using this, the same techniques to create the graphics, but I'm using different shapes and different colors and different uh, um, and, and and different forms. So, so you had that th that those two basic styles. Yeah, I'm very familiar with the next gen stuff, uh, and, and particularly now having watched Picard. And I mean, they, when you really notice it, it's very beautiful stuff. I mean, can, you know, it's it's, you. it's it's futuristic, but um, uh, believable, as it were, that it actually, you know, would work. What what did the what, you have a panel? Oh, you oh. brought. I do. Oh yes, we uh, have a we have a I mean, show. I'll and tell. say this: I think that you know, uh, for generations. Uh, beyond us, they're going to look at that and they're going to know that. That's yeah, there you. it is. That's Star Trek. Yeah. That's Star Trek. Yeah. The most important aspect of this isn't the fact that it. I, I hope it looks futuristic and cool. Mm. It's that this is relatively fast to uh, to manufacture and it's relatively inexpensive. If you Liz was saying that the other day. If yeah. you make a control panel where you got to drill holes and, and and put toggle switches in and mm. put, put little lights and blinkies. The cost per square foot is going to be very, very high. Right. Mm. I started with saying, hey, how? Uh, what's the least expensive control panel you can make? And in this case, it was a graphic right. on that's backlit on plexiglass. Uh -huh. on plexiglass. Yeah. Yeah. And then after having made that decision, how can I make it look futuristic and cool and logical? Yeah. But it, but it was in that order. Right. So that became the Starfleet style for Star Trek The Next Generation. And you just light it from behind and light it from uh, behind, and, bolt, and then suddenly yeah. it comes alive. And so, yeah. was Enterprise with our stuff expensive then? Because we yes. kind of didn't have this. Stuff. Yes, in yeah. fact, we yeah. have, a... have another one. Oh, yeah. Wouldn't you know? Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Here's my next question: Is because like now, when you design, give, give me the other one. I'll, I'll when you design it. something like this, mm -hmm. uh, do you have an idea of of how it's supposed to? I don't want to do this, but works. And then you see an episode, with, for instance, <laughs> me, and, like, <laughs> and you're well, like, no, that's not how I drew that up. Connor doesn't know how to well, use the it's gear. important. Uh, the, the first thing is uh, you don't want to stress the actors by saying that's the button you push. Mm. Because it, because if I, if I tell you that, mm. first of all, you're not going to remember. No, I'm, I'm, not, I'm actually not. You specifically. He, he was pointing at Connor. <laughs> second, second. Uh, more likely, if I want you to push that button, the director is going to want you to push that yeah, button. Based on camera, right. lights, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Right. So if you look at these, I like to think they make sense. They look like they make sense. Mm -hmm. But in fact, I make a real effort to make them as generic as possible. All right. Gotcha. So that you are correct no matter what button you push. Yeah. Uh, in fact, at the beginning of each of the Star Trek shows, uh, Rick asked me, please talk to the cast. And the thing I always try to emphasize is 
what's most important is that you look comfortable and confident doing what you do. Yeah. Right. I do remember starting out, uh, and this is part of my sort of you know, nature and uh, a bit of OCD. I remember at my console thinking, well, this button's going to do the photon. This is going to do the, the this. Mm -hmm. And, and then it all, it just, you know, garbled my mind. And I was like, ah, as you say. And then I just, it, it was like, well, I'm a secretary, really. And I'm just, it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the zen <laughs> of it. There that was no button. You were like, it's database entry. That no was button. my note to myself. <laughs> There's no button. You were like, oh, oh no. <laughs> is, uh, <laughs> it, how, how, however, however, uh, what I didn't know is that Scott decided that the lower left hand mm -hmm. button on one on, particular panel was the on his comment. arm chair on the uh, on his I, I chair. I don't know which one it was. It was something in his quarters because we got called down to set. Oh yeah, he um, actually, we got he, called down to set because Scott wanted to know the correct button to push or something wonderful. like that. Yeah, and he said there wasn't a white button here. Uh, yeah, that's right. Really? And yeah. so after that, yeah. I told everyone every panel has to have a, a white button yes. in, in uh, the lower don't right. Don't you corner. worry your pretty little head it, about it, honey. It's, it, it's, it's the baccula button. It's the baccula <laughs> button. That <laughs> was in his contract. The baccula effect. Yeah. <laughs> but if we can, if we can back up, uh, the the control panel style for Star Trek: The Next Generation was deliberately designed to be inexpensive and fast. Mm. So when we started an enterprise, uh, uh, to your question. Um, Mary Howard came up to the art department and said, you know, we need this to be different. You know, uh, uh, we love what you did before, but we need to do something else. Mm -hmm. And I said, happy to do that. And uh, But I said, you understand that every decision I have made to this point is how can I make it less expensive? Mm -hmm. Right. So everything that I do, everything that I do that's different is going to cost you more. So, so when you pushed another piece of paper across the table. <laughs> <laughs> well, at yeah. the very first production meeting, I had es I had an estimate for uh, for the control panels and the computers and things. You're obviously talking to Herman at this point about all this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Herman, yeah. Herman, Herman is is aware minute to minute what I'm doing. Right. And at the at the production meeting, uh, uh, one of our senior producers <laughs> says, "Are you out of your?" Mind, really? <laughs> really? Yeah. yes. And I said, and I, uh, and I stood my ground. I said, "Look, I have figured out a way. See the, these little buttons? These are uh, these are actually three M bump ons that you you put on the bottoms of things that that you you put on the table right. so that they don't scratch oh, the so table. Don't scratch the table. Oh. And so these this is actually a very inexpensive way of making physical buttons. Look at you. Interesting. And so." Even though it was a lot more money than they were used to spending on Next Generation, it was way less expensive than it would be to buy all these switches. Right. And uh, what's yeah. the difference in cost between uh, the Next Generation, like three times, four times, something I mean, like that? Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't really know. Um, I remember you saying it was like three times more. Mm -hmm. yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah, that's why they had to make the ship smaller. <laughs> yeah. Fewer buttons. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no, actually, actually, the uh, the uh, NX01 bridge, the the instrumentation was considerably more expensive oh, uh, yeah. because uh, we we had those physical buttons. That even the even these buttons were were more expensive than the backlets, and we had all the, all, all those, those real computers screens. and the flat screens and the flat so screens, many. and they were expensive. I mean, this is the early two thousands. They were very expensive. Oh yeah. And um, that uh, that. 42-inch plasma screen at the back, I think it was like ten thousand oh, dollars. Oh yeah, yeah. Really so so we, we we get the show. They're all like, "Go buy your house." Yeah. Um, Dominic buys his house first, I think, and then he gets this whole <laughs> media thing. And you bought one of those Fujitsu. TVs. Yeah. How much was it? Fifteen grand. Fifteen grand. Yeah. Still have it. I still have it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting my money's worth. <laughs> but yeah, I mean the costs. You know, now you bought, could buy that TV for seventy-two less, inch for yeah. seven hundred dollars. Those were the days when that was. Just... Yeah, we have an eighty-five inch TV in our living room, so it's just like it costs less than that it, one did. Yeah, yeah. I right, mean, right, ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, uh, but yeah. it cost. You know, it co enterprise cost a lot of money. It was at least um, three mil a show, wasn't it? I think it was, I remember that number. I, 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 don't, I don't know. Around. I just know what we did in the art department and and so forth and so on. But it looked great. It did, didn't it? Yeah, yeah it, it really looked did. great. As far as the DVDs go and like the Blu-ray mm -hmm. transfers, mm -hmm. our show looks the same. 
Yeah. It looks great. It looks great. You know, we didn't have the uh, the transfer from film, and we didn't have well, the foam f- rocks. Uh, the, the first three seasons, the first, yeah. oh, 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 did we, we did rocks? shoot in film. <laughs> of Enterprise? Yes. Mm-hmm. It was only the last season that we went digital? Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh. But it was for, from not the beginning. Not in season three? Did we not go to Sony Red in, in the Zindi it was season? Se- it was season four, but was it? But uh, it was it was always protected for uh, for sixteen by nine. Protected for sixteen by. Uh, what does that mean? That that means you, you, that means you, you you frame it so that it, it'll work in season. Yeah, oh, uh, you uh, can because yeah. um, you because you've gone on to do all the remastering of the original series, the next generation, and the next generation. Gen. I mean, yes. and that's a massive undertaking. I mean, how do you even start? Well, the that's, next gen. I mean, the, that must have cost them a fortune to go back and it, do all that. It did. It did. Did, they do, did you do a test run first to see whether it was doable? Uh, well, CBS brought us in very early on, and they said, "Hey, we've got a, uh, this new process to upres the the standard def." And we look and we looked at it, and it looked it looked good, but it didn't look anything like 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 HD should look. Mm. So we said, if you want to do this, please, you know, we're, we won't, we won't object, but, you know. Uh, you guys we, go have fun. We don't want to <laughs> do this. Be a part of it. Yeah. yeah. And, and if you, you might, was, you might have burned your hand, your fingers, you mean. And we, yeah. we knew we were. We knew we were. And we've done that before. Right. If, if it's, if it doesn't feel right, if we don't feel, um, we didn't want to do the remastered. Uh, we didn't want to do it. Why for next gen would, or would, original? Original. Right, why would you right. touch perfection? Right. <laughs> and, I love you guys. And, um, <laughs> That's awesome. So we um, we said no. We don't have any interest in changing what they made back. I mean, yes, yeah, some of the effects are don't stand the uh, the test of time. Mm. But um, part of its charm, though, isn't it? And but. Then I remember Michael and I had a conversation for, I don't know, 45 minutes about we, we were saying if we were going to work on the project, this is what we would do. And then after we were done, the person said, well, <laughs> either, you know, either come on board or, just, or you know, or shut up. And right. so we mm. decided or to burn your notes. Yeah, well, and well, we decided I mean, to who better to do it than people who revere it and want to mm. uh, keep it as close to what it was. I will tell you that even with something you love, the temptation to change it, yeah. to play with it, is irresistible. Uh, mm-hmm. And a lot of times you regret that. And I understand everything that George Lucas did to, to Star Wars. And I, I wish. And, well, <laughs> it's his movie. He can do whatever he wants. I just wish I, I, I could also have the original. Yeah. Right. Yes. Mm-hmm. And that, yes. What was Absolutely. The, what was the main uh, focus on what you were going to do with... Uh, Time and money. The original series? Mm. Well, the, the, uh, there were really two parts to it. First, the, uh, a new transfer of, uh, of the film to HD and, and, and new color timing. Mm. And... It w- that was gorgeous it's because gorgeous. The, the a lot original, of that looks great. I yeah, mean, the original film was it was, was fine grain film, and, yeah. and and the colors were richer, and the and yeah. the uh, the costumes were far more detailed than you ever saw in, mm-hmm. in standard def. The problem was uh, the original optical effects that which were made with uh, with uh, 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 optical printers as groundbreaking and as mm. uh, and as beautiful and as stunning as they were. The actual image quality, in some cases, didn't hold up, and also the original film elements didn't exist. They only had the composites, so, oh. you, so you couldn't rebuild those effects. Right, right. So, so they uh, end up standing. They, they they look like two different. Yeah. Shows, so CBS they were. wanted, CBS wanted to goose the effects, and we didn't want them to. So we were there to try to put, put the brakes on it to say, well, let's do what they did originally, and and. Uh, you know, it was, a, it was a compromise. Yeah, what a hard place to sit where you're you're trying to upgrade something while trying to retain the yeah. essence of what it was. And what well, it was. we also were dealing with a lot of people that wanted to make it better. And we had to keep saying, we need to stick with what, what, what we saw and we just need to replicate that. And um, when I said time and money... Uh, there wasn't enough of either, and right. so there never is. But it was a challenging project. One of the uh, one of the most iconic images in the original Star Trek is from the first pilot. There's this castle with this huge moon in the sky. Uh, 
from the cage. From the cage. Yeah, the cage. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, Planet Rigel Seven, where he fights the giant. And yeah. we had we had a brilliant matte artist at CBS Digital working on the remastered original series named Max Gable. Uh, he's a great artist, and he said, "Well, look at the light. Look at the angle of the light on the moon, and look at the angle of the light on the castle. It's different. Uh, it's wrong. Can I fix it?" Mm. And I said, "I I don't know what that would look like. I don't think so." Uh, my inclination is we should just clean up the matte lines uh, and put a little bit of ripple on the water and walk away from it. And he said, well, let me try this. So next week we come back and he's done a great job of repainting it so that all the lighting is consistent. And suddenly all the magic is sucked out of it. Hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. The original matte artist, Al, Al Whitlock, one of the great matte artists of, uh, in film history, had selected th those wrong angles to make it look more dramatic. On purpose. On purpose. Yeah. Interesting. Make it unnatural. Yeah. yeah. All right. It's amazing. So I said, so we, we went back to Al Whitlock's painting and just you know, cleaned up a few of the technical issues. I mean, did they see that when they when you showed them? Uh, or is it always a fight? I mean, did they go, oh, okay, yeah, we get well, that. Well, we had, we had a lot of really good artists mm -hmm. who had who had different opinions, and, and, and sometimes and sometimes they see something that, that we don't. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's important to take advantage of, of their expertise. And I'm sure they thought we were pain in the ass. I mean, <laughs> because we were, we were so... Friends. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now, contrast that to Next Generation. For Star Trek The Next Generation, uh, Paramount had brilliantly archived and cataloged virtually every single film element of the entire series. So for the ship shots in Next Generation, almost all of them are are recomposited from the original really? film elements. Mm. And that's why those effects can be so authentic to the originals. Mm. And, I, and that was the same team, CBS digital team, by the mm. way. All right. How much research do you wind up doing in, in, in that element of the work where you're trying to grab the essence of what you're um, read? Doing no way so too that, much. You got to you, you got to you got to you got to study what was done. Even yeah. even if you worked on it to, to begin with. Mm. Even though even though we had watched it as entertainment, you know you had to go back and look at it with another eye. So Enterprise D. So you, you Terry, uh, who came to you to to come back on board and? Uh, 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 Dave Blass and Dave Blass. Uh, Terry Metalis, uh said for season one or actually season. Two right season two. I did a little bit of consulting for uh, uh, for the art department. Was they had a new starship, the Stargazer, and they yes. they wanted to upgrade the uh, uh, the Elcar's style. That's that was Todd's ship, right? The yes. Stargazer. Yeah, right. Well, no, 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 uh, no, no, no. Oh, is that so, Jerry? Hang no, on. Captain. That's season two of Picard. That's, okay. Uh, yeah. Um, the Stargazer is that the one that the the the, the what's they, his face the, the cigar smoking Latin, yes so the the um, Latin captain he's terrific oh, isn't what he? is his name I forget I but forget it's a lovely performance so that's his ship no no you're no, you're you're, no, you're, thinking the, you're thinking the La Serena yeah that's the La Serena the Stargazer two from the first episode of Picard season two was uh, him. Because he had his little ship in season one, and then he had we the Stargazer you. in season two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they approached you to come in and, and um, you know do some graphics and stuff for that. Well, Dave Blast, production designer for Star Trek Picard seasons two and three, um, he approached me and said, "Would I work on uh, uh, on graphics for uh, uh, for Picard season two? Because they have a new ship, the Stargazer." Mm -hmm. And I said, I'd love to, but Denise and I are already committed to working on it for all mankind. So I'll, I'll, I'll work for a few weeks, but I'll, and, and I'll try to point you in, in the right direction. And, um, uh, Dave had ended up hiring, uh, uh, Jeff Mandel, a very fine graphic artist, and, and they had some, uh, some great graphic designers from, uh, I'm, I'm I'm blanking on the company name, but it's uh, Andrew Jarvis and 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 those people. Okay, and they uh, they did Twisted a great job. Twisted Media. Twisted Media. Ah. They, they they did a great job. Uh, fast forward to at, at the end of the season of uh, of For All Mankind. I don't know how we knew it, but uh, literally the, the day after we wrapped, uh, uh, Blast contacted contacted me again and said, "Would you consider working on three? Because Terry Metamis is quoted as saying it's not a Star Trek uh, Enterprise show unless the Kudas are working on this. So, you know, <laughs> high praise. Yeah, yeah it was. Yeah. It, it, Terry's wonderful. And of course, we knew him when he was a, a, 
PA yeah. back yeah. on Voyager, and he and he was Lord knows I wish I'd been nicer to him. <laughs> <laughs> That'll learn you. <laughs> I'll teach you. Um, so you do, so you do season two and season three, and God knows, I mean, it's a, such a wonderful recreation. Yeah. Uh, and the I was looking at some next gen episodes last night. The Tin Man, that because uh, you've been nominated three times for Emmys, haven't you? Tin Man and uh, the Best of Both Worlds one and two, and uh, I was looking at the uh, the difference between you know the original uh, bridge and the the recreated. And bridge. what does it look? Oh, what you, it look it's here? almost. I mean, it's, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's imperceptible, but the the bridge on uh, on Picard just it's the same, but it's kind of brighter and well, the lighting style. The lighting style is a little different. You know, it's, yes. it's 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 a wonderful recreation and just. Pops, it just pops a bit more, doesn't yeah. it? Well, Dave Blass and yeah. uh, Liz Klutzkowski did an amazing, amazing. job. Yeah. yeah, and uh, they said, "Well, whatever you did on the on the graphics, do the same thing." And the the interest, the thing that I thought was really interesting was, I had a specific look that I wanted for the colors on the Next Generation bridge, and I never really got them because I couldn't, I didn't have control over the kind of lights they used under the panels. Right. So the colors were uh, varied more than I wanted. But now that we're recreating this, all those things that I hated about the, the, those color variations and those hot spots had to recreate. That's part of the look. Oh, 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 oh. So you had to redo the thing you didn't like. Redo the hate. <laughs> <laughs> but as That's a result, right. It, when you when you stood on that set, it really felt it really yeah felt. completely yeah and they sort of uh, featured it more if, if you will it became a you know in the original in, in the next gens they don't really focus on it I mean it's there and you see Geordie working his thing or you see Worf working it but it's uh, but I noticed in, in Picard that they you know they really show it off yeah well yeah. also in eighty seven we didn't have video monitors we could we couldn't afford right. it and. It, and we certainly didn't have uh, flat screen displays. Uh, in in Picard three, uh, Todd Marks and his his video team, Ben Betts, Ben Larry Betts, Malcart. Larry Malcart, uh all these a lot of these things that I originally did with static backlit graphics are suddenly uh, high resolution OLED displays mm -hmm. in which you're recreating what I did, but as a result. You can animate it. The the uh, there's a great shot in the uh, when they enter the bridge where the, the everything's everything lights up. It's it's all animated. Yeah, could never have done that back then. Uh, that was amazing. I mean, on our show, I mean, that bridge set was just phenomenal, wasn't it? The I have to tell you the story of oh, the yes. very first day uh, of oh, yeah. on the pilot, and you guys. I'm sure weren't even aware. Most people weren't even aware. Um, I was watching Judge Judy in the trailer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we had asked to do weekend work because we had never fired up all of the monitors on the bridge, ran the animation. We yeah. just ran out of time. Yeah. If we, if we can back up a little bit, from the from the moment we wrapped on at the end of the last season of Voyager. Mm -hmm. To the moment we uh, we rolled camera on the pilot episode of, of Enterprise on the bridge was five, five weeks. weeks. We had oh, five what? weeks, and we were fried cookies <laughs> because you have to remember we were working two shows and we were doing the DS9 pre your Yeah, we did you know pre production, principal photography, post production. We were involved in all that, and we had five weeks from wrapping Voyager to. To rolling camera on on Enterprise, Holy so that's, we were fried. That's designing all the uh, and, and even though we're only control panels, and 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 video displays and video readouts, uh, that's ordering the computers. And, you mean the whole ship? Yeah, pretty, pretty much. <laughs> Basically, yeah. And you didn't fight. <laughs> we, Us? We were too afraid. No. We were too Come panicked. on. We were too Spill panicked. It. No, we didn't. First of all, we were. First of all, we're a team. Uh, and this is going to sound really Pollyanna. I'm being facetious. We we're a team, and we support each other. There are times when one or the other is really tired, and we're really down, and we're going, "Why are we doing this? Take a nap, Why buddy. are we carrying ourselves?" <laughs> the other person will step up and, and yeah. be the strong one, and blah blah blah. Okay, so. We were not allowed. I asked, can we please work the weekend? We have not fired all these monitors up, ran the animation together. We're shooting on Monday morning. 
They said, no, I won't name the person, but I'll never forget it. Um, no. I said, okay. So we get there, we get to Paramount at 4 a.m. And guess what? We had a problem. You're kidding. I'm not. I have never. Every single screen didn't work. <gasps> I have oh, never good Lord. been so stressed in all my life. Not and that's even doing CPR in the hospital. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, no, it, it was. And Jim Conway did not take any prisoners, did he? A he was, nightmare. Oh he never. He, he, he didn't he never, know. He never knew. He didn't know. He didn't know. <laughs> so, long involved story short, we solved the problem thirty seconds before the camera what? rolled. Oh my gosh! Oh, smart. That was my first. I did the first shot. You were the first shot. Really? I did. Yeah, yeah. I was the first pop. It just me and my console. You know, yes, Captain, whatever, something like that. So you're sitting there like, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I was running from the art department to the stage. And I knew that the exit was right over there because there's the parking structure. <laughs> I really wanted to run out the yeah. gates. Wow. The stress was that intense. There was a problem. I was nervous, too. Yeah. <laughs> there was a problem with the way that the animation had been built. Yeah. All of the animation loops. Meaning? Uh, meaning that uh, uh, most of the animation on the bridge in that scene were what we call wallpaper, wallpaper. loops. They, they, it's the same thing over and right. over again. And so it would play through the loop and then it'd stop. Right. And you can't film like that. No. Uh, so No, and Rick Berman... I, he, I, he a, I, a, I can a, feel my blood pressure going up all these so years later, later <laughs> thinking about this. It he, was uh, something else. But Denise was the one who figured out what the technical issue with the, with the way that the, uh, the, the coding was written. And she, and she just, she, and I think she, I think she roped somebody else into it. They, they were just opening up and resaving all the files. Oh, my God. I mean, it was Ben Betts just pulling his fingernails out in that room at the back there. Oh yeah, yeah. Must have been going. We were, was, uh, we, oh, yeah. It was, it was and horrible. Then we ran the discs down, down, and then loaded them up. And thank God we had been there. Seconds before God, it's like the broadcast camera. news, we're like, oh, yeah. take the tape. Yeah, we're running right the tape <laughs> under the Anyway, I, I was that. pretty sure you guys weren't aware of that, because um, nobody was, <laughs> uh, almost no one was aware, and that's how we started Enterprise. Wow. Wow. So I got a question. What we were know, screwed from day one, right? Really. Yeah. 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 No, we were <laughs> saved from day one. Right. We pulled it off. We so the ship you know, launched without a hitch. Yeah. Enterprise ends, and then there's a gap in Star Trek storytelling for at least a couple of years, isn't there? It's like a decade. Four years. Oh, Four. quite a bit. Uh, yeah, yeah. Did you both panic and like, well, what are we gonna do? What did you do? We kind of expect, we never expected Star Trek to last as long as it did. We always uh, planned, okay, if Star Trek ends this year, you know, make, we make sure we have, save, we have money saved, we make sure that our expenses are low. Because, as you know, the film industry is, is so unpredictable. Fickle. You, fickle is best. the word. <laughs> mm. So it was lean for a while, but it was okay. And we went, I mean, we did the Christie's auction. And that, yes, we, right. Yeah, we, did the Christi, come to that. we did the Christie's auction. And How we were, soon after that was it? Like did weeks. That couple, it was weeks, weeks after. They well, we did a pilot. We did a pilot. We did Threshold. Yeah, so we did a pilot. Brian show. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 We did, while, while Enterprise was wrapping up before, we did Threshold. We did yeah. the pilot. Yeah, no, the, uh, Christie's was the following year, so it was... I don't remember yeah, something like that. Yeah, at all. But you were at all the little garb for all the pieces. I mean, how many how many pieces did they? I mean, was there was a thousand thousand, thousand, thousand thousand lots. It didn't mean a thousand pieces. A lot could be, um, you know, twenty objects. Did you know what each piece was? I mean, or did, how did you? I mean, how we were, had. Uh, I mean, we we certainly knew some of the things. Right. But we had a binder in which I had all of the DVDs of all the Star Trek uh, episodes and movies. So a lot of research, man. That's, so and uh, a lot of and work. Our, our friend yeah. Dave Rossi came in to help about with that. Yeah. Thank goodness, because he would go, "Oh yeah, that's Captain Kirk's thing, or that's uh, that's Picard's." We thing. did a lot of research. It was um, what did you six keep? months. <laughs> mm -hmm. Six months. Six months of um, working in un uh, air conditioned. Uh, 
no environmental protections in any of these five warehouses. Warehouse? Yeah, yeah. five warehouses. Five warehouses. So in the summertime, it would reach they were on 100. The lot. Were they on the lot or were they no. down the valley? Uh, Selmar. Selmar. Um, Downey. Um, they, they were all over all the place. over the place, and there was a lot of stuff. There were set pieces, but then there was just, you know, crates of shoes, and and there would there would be uh, large crates of, of of rocks. Yeah, I mean, there was so much stuff, and we had to go through. We were did, told. Did they sell those rocks? <laughs> I don't. No. They, no. They. Uh, what What motivated us? Was we loved all the stuff, and maybe not the rocks, but we, yeah. we we loved the stuff. But the original plan was, whatever Christie's didn't sell, was going to get shredded. We're shredded. Uh, it was going to get shredded. Destroyed. So we yeah. were on a mission to save as much right. as we could because yeah. we knew that if we got these articles into the hands of the fans, mm. that they would protect it. Yeah. Good mm. And so we were on a mission, oh. and um, it was quite yeah, good an for experience. You. You two yeah. made the catalogs, right? For yeah, the we, yeah, we designed the catalogs. Yeah. They wrote the text for the catalog. Yeah. Um, it was probably the fastest book we've ever read. That's great. That's great. That's great. Sounds good. Because you've done the, encyc the encyclopedia and you've done four editions of that, correct? Uh, like something four, like that. Four printings. I don't something remember. Like the technical like manual. And the chronology. You know, and uh, a couple of them. And I understand that, sorry, you, you, the writers come to you, you came up with a lot of the techno babble. This was your invention and a lot of the alien language writing is your design. And the Alien languages, no, but um, uh, Rick Sternbach and I were uh, tech consultants on, on the right. show because we were the first two space geeks on on uh, next generation and also we were kind of stupid enough to to just send gene roddenberry memos saying hey this should be this and we were lucky that roddenberry and then later on rick berman and michael pillar they appreciated this stuff mm -hmm. you know you would think i mean it would, it, in retrospect it was kind of stupid of us because to, to tell the executive producers here's here's how you should write your show right mm -hmm. But uh, what always amazed me, and certainly on Enterprise, was that a lot of that techno babble actually, when you broke it down, it made, it made sense. It and actually, that was the that was the key. Yeah. It it, uh, uh, it had to have some basis in reality and, uh, and and science, even if it was imaginary. Yeah. And even even the term techno babble, I don't think I invented the word, but I was the one who used it for Star Trek, and the reason it was. A lot of the writers, especially early on, were intimidated by this right. thing. Mm. And if you say, "Well, technically accurate, it needs to be this," they'll, they'll they will understandably freeze up. Whereas if you kind of make light of it, saying, "Oh, it's just techno babble. We're just trying to yeah. uh, your, we're not trying to rewrite your scene. We're just trying to change proton to neutron." And uh, well, it prompts the question, and it has to be asked on our show. How does the Heisenberg compensator work? <laughs> it works very well. <laughs> <laughs> High five. <laughs> I, I don't know if you're aware, but that quote uh, comes from an interview that I did in Time magazine. Uh -huh. They were doing an article, uh, a special issue, Star Trek issue for, the, uh, uh, for one of the big anniversaries. And one of the Time Magazine writers called me for, I don't know why she called, but she did, and asked, and wanted just to fact check a bunch of stuff. <laughs> and so she asked a bunch of things and I answered them as best as I could. But I, 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 I had a job and I had to get back to what I was doing. <laughs> and her last question was, how does the Heisenberg compensator work? And yeah. she expected me to invent some yeah, right. explanation. Right. And I said, it worked very well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, brilliant. The best, the best answer possible. I gotta go. Uh, I because I wasn't even particularly aware of the uncertainty principle about it. what is it is, so uh, uh, elect what is it pa particles you can yeah, you, you can measure the velocity or the position but you can't do both at exactly, the same time exactly right and look at me <laughs> oh. <laughs> theoretical oh, physics yeah. Yeah. Basically a, physicist. a, a plus <laughs> and uh, it uh, I first used it in. Uh, 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 in the system diagram that I did for the transporter in Star Trek The Next Generation. And I was aware of it because uh, Arthur Clarke had written a book uh, 
uh, called Profiles of the Future, and it explained why the uncertainty principle would make it very difficult for a transporter to work. So well, yeah. when, I, when I design a control panel, I try to tell myself a little story about how the system works. I don't have to exactly know, but it, it just gives it a little more visual credibility. And I just thought, well, well how, do we, uh, how do we compensate for the uncertainty principle? Mm -hmm. And I started thinking of all these complicated words, and I realized, wait, this is science fiction. You don't have to explain it. You just have to say, there's a compensator. There's a Heisenberg compensator. Right, right. right. So I, I, I put a little label that said Heisenberg compensation. Yeah. Clark, what a genius. I mean, when you see some of the things he was saying 50, 60 years ago. That unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. I yeah. mean, truly. I yeah. just saw him recently. He did an a interview a long time ago, but there was a bit on Twitter where he was talking about basically how we live our lives now, about what to expect with your phones mm -hmm. and be able mm -hmm. to, to work from home and there's no more need to, you know, be in an office together. And no, he, he saw... He didn't saw see the pandemic coming, though. <laughs> he didn't. I wanted to ask, you know, uh, without you guys, there would be no catalog. Did you go to them with the catalog idea? Did they come to you for the for Christie's? Christie's thing? Yeah. Well, that was their idea. That I mean, Christie's, they were great to work with, but that's what they did. They, you know, that they have catalogs for other auction right. uh, items. And did they think that when Enterprise? cancelled that that was kind of going to be the end of Star Trek. I mean, and this, I was like, let's just get rid of this stuff. Well, wasn't it Paramount saying we got to get rid of all this crap in our storage it, facilities? Yeah, I was going to say it costs a lot of money to, to store yeah. to store everything. Right. Um, and so they... Why they kept it all those years? Well, for 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 Maybe. almost for almost twenty years, they had an ongoing need for uh, yeah. for for that stuff. Yeah. But at the end of that, they ha they had five. The rent on five warehouses, they uh, they told us what it was. It was some fierce number. Yeah. I was watching, uh, I don't know, an old episode. It was uh, maybe next gen. And I swear to God, there was a configuration of rock. No, maybe it was the shoot, actually. Or anyway, there was a configuration of rocks. And I'm like, oh, we use that configuration. <laughs> <laughs> exactly the same <laughs> folding and the, you know, the same bubble coming out. It was like, yeah, no, I walked around that. Yeah. Yeah. Your your encyclopedia of Star Trek, though, and it's had now how many iterations? Updates? Four. Four? Four, if I don't I, remember. I'm telling you, it's four. I, be, I okay, believe you. I believe you. <laughs> I believe you. Yeah. Um, I've signed a lot of them, too. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. Likewise. You're welcome. Uh, was, they, they always come to you guys, or did you come to them? or They. They. Um, uh, we did the Star Trek. The Star Trek chronology, actually, Gene Roddenberry came to us and asked us to write uh, the chronology because um, there were all, there were novels and stuff and he wanted everything to be, to reflect what was seen on the shows as canon. And so that's what Mike and I did and we put the chronology together. That was a fun book to write, but a lot of work. And we would, we would take the script, we'd watch the aired episode, we'd correct the script to air, and then that would be our Bible. That's that's what we that's the by the definitions and the timeline is what we we had an 18 page uh, questionnaire and we would go through every episode and you know where was the enterprise going you know um, what was it doing and we'd put that all together like a puzzle mm. and we had all this information a lot more than went into the chronology and pocketbooks Simon and Schuster yeah Kevin Ryan who Kevin was executive Ryan, yeah. editor at the time came to us and said would you do an encyclopedia? And we thought, oh, how much work can that be? <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. We figured it was, a, it was the same information. Was it a summer house? <laughs> we figured it was the same information. One is, is organized chronologically. The other one's organized alphabetically. And we thought, ah. Oh, sure, easy peasy. Sure. So we were working on two television series and a feature every other year and writing these God. books. And it's a do good you thing. Just go, I just can't do any more Trek. I mean, I'm just done. Yes, but not then. No. Yeah. But yes, we have absolutely so. Because I know you're, you're, you're huge fans of the West Wing, or were, weren't you? And absolutely. You, oh, yeah. You, you hid Easter eggs in some of the episodes. Wasn't Love there a, the West Wing. Wasn't there a, a list of some crew members that died yeah, in one that, episode? Yeah, that ended up being a little more prominent than they should have. It should have been. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you, tried to, you tried to disguise it, didn't you, so that the yeah. casual observer fan wouldn't notice. And, yeah. uh, and that that, that was done in the, uh, with our cohort, uh, uh, Jim Vanover Sr., who was a uh, who was graphic animator on the show. Mm. One of the nice things, though, is that um, we have a saying, if it ain't fun, 
we're not doing it. Right. Um, and so we have tried to look for projects um, that have that spark our interest or our enthusiasm. And of course, we love Star Trek, and that has carried it through many, many years. But the current uh, series we're working on is Apple TV Plus um, for All Mankind, mm-hmm. um, created by uh, Ron Moore, Ron Moore yeah. who w- worked on TNG and DS9 and so forth and so on. He brought us on, not as designers, but as technical consultants, because he knew we were big space geeks. Mm. And so that's what we've been doing for the last um, uh, four seasons. It's a testament to your talent that you have been able to do what you want and like and love. Yeah, we're very no lucky when we very know lucky. we're lucky and yeah. we don't take it for granted. Yeah. yeah. Clearly. Yeah. <laughs> then we've got to touch on the NASA stuff. Oh, uh, yes. And your designs for, you know, their emblems for uh, the constellation thing, wasn't it? Uh, was that was that that was the one of them. the shit that went up to do the work on the Hubble space? Well, actually um yeah, um, Project Constellation, uh, which is sadly now canceled, that is, yeah. was a uh, was a was a whole suite of projects which were designed to uh, take the money from the from canceling the space shuttle and develop new rockets and spacecraft to return to the moon and then go on to Mars. Right. And uh, the present day space launch system and the uh, and the Orion spacecraft are actually. Uh, uh, holdovers from from Constellation. Oh, and the uh, uh, Constellation's project manager uh, Jeff Hanley asked me to design some uh, uh, a bunch of emblems for, for the the various projects in there. All right, and I've, I've gotten to do emblems for a, uh, a fair number of NASA departments. Uh, the most fun thing, of course, was uh, space shuttle mission STS one twenty five, which was the final servicing mission to Hubble. Mm-hmm. And I was con- I was contacted by astronaut uh, John Grunsfeld, mm. uh, who, uh, who wanted an emblem for that. And uh, I was chatting with him, and one day he said, "You know, one of the reasons he became a professional astronomer and an astronaut is because he wanted to be like Mr. Spock on Star Trek." <laughs> I, I have to tell you a real quick story. My wedding ring. Um, John it's put up Gr- there, isn't it? Uh, no, it's right here. Uh, uh, the, uh, John Grunsfield said, would you like uh, to put something in my, my personal, um, you know, because every little ounce going into space is very expensive. So right. he said, if you guys would like to put something in my personal, um, personal store, preference kit. Pre- personal preference kit. And so um, we went out and bought a new diamond for my wedding ring and we sent it. It went into space and oh, came back and we put it and we had the jewelry put in. So this is my magic space diamond. Yeah. This has been <laughs> in. Did you get it checked? It is actually the same one. It's not Do you know we, <laughs> do you know we, actually, trust those, huh? <laughs> we actually called our um, insurance adjuster person and said, how do we um, insure this? Yeah. And he said, I don't think you can. I don't <laughs> yeah. think there's a president there's no for president this. For so it was a leap of faith, but it came Brilliant. back and it's wow, on wonderful. my, this is my magic space diamond. We'll yeah, have to kiss that on. Oh my God, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. uh, and you, you, you've received a, I forget what it was, lifetime a lifetime. No, well, well, you got an award from from the from from the NASA from NASA. Yes. Yeah. For, I think he's done with the Art Director Guild. What? ADG. No, no I'm well, talking about the Art Director no, Guild. We got NASA, lifetime achievement. Lifetime but, achievement. But Michael got the, and I don't ever remember the name of it. It's an exceptional, exceptional public service. Public service. A public service. That's yes, what it is. we yeah. flew to we flew to um, Houston, and Michael went on stage and got this very high honor, yeah. which is, you know, wonderful. And if we're talking awards, we, you know, you've got the ADG Award, uh, the Art Directors Guild Award for Lifetime Achievement. Mm-hmm. Both, lifetime Achievement Award. Nice. Has Mr. Musk uh, reached out to you in any respect? <laughs> no, he, he has not. <laughs> Just asking. But uh, has he tweeted you? Sorry, well, X'd you? No, I was going to say. No, no, no. We did visit the uh, SpaceX facility in uh, in Hawthorne. It, amazing. Uh, it really, really is amazing, amazing. What, the, what they're doing there. It is, so, isn't it? it? Is. The, there are rumors, aren't there, that we he might be coming on the show? There are rumors. There are rumors. We're doing an episode in space shuttle. with him. <laughs> no, <laughs> nice. Take us with you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, are you guys familiar with a company called Vector Rockets? Uh, uh, it's Sean Steven, Coleman. Stephen no. Smith from NASA introduced you to Sean Coleman and Vector Rockets a number of years ago. Do you recall that? He's uh, a big fan of ours and a patron and a sub, you know, big patron of the show. And yeah. 
He has a rocket. He has a, ro we a have rocket, a rocket company. company patron. <laughs> Whoa, yeah. That's very cool. Yeah, it's very cool. Which which is Vector Rockets? Vector Rock. Well, I think it's all top secret. So yeah, it actually is quite top secret, yeah. isn't yeah. it? That's uh, uh, government it's stuff. It's on the rocket ray. Rocket. <laughs> um, uh, it's a small rocket. They do the. Top secret stuff. Suffice it to say, if I lose a couple of pounds, apparently they'll take me up. <laughs> <laughs> you are small, Dominic. Have you, uh, have you guys been up in any of the rockets like Shatner has? And... No, that costs money. <laughs> well, they, well, I'm sure no. I'm you. sure they paid him, not the yes, right, but right. yeah, no. It's I would little. little... That. <laughs> yeah, right. But it um, does sound like fun. It sounds like fun. We'd love to. <laughs> yeah, but, sure. Yeah, it's only a mile away. Yeah, yeah. Up. Up. <laughs> so uh, yeah. Should we go to some uh, some fan, fan questions? questions? I think so. Uh, I'm just going to say here. Uh, I, I haven't counted them yet, but there's a chance you guys broke our number of fan questions. Oh record. wow! Nice. No yeah, kidding. We have not so many you're up to seven. Them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, one Good time you being funny. <laughs> <laughs> first time we got six questions. I was like an excited little boy. Can we call you Mikey O? <laughs> Apparently, if you're really if you're good mates with him, it's Mikey O. Yeah. You are? Uh, uh, I'm not there yet. No, <laughs> <laughs> not today. <laughs> Mr. Akuda, you sound giant. <laughs> uh, exactly. So I, I do want to say uh, thank you to everyone out there who sent in questions. It's really amazing how many of you got excited about this episode and uh, how many were uh, assuming that this would require at least two episodes with the volume of information and the number of stories that you guys have to, tell, mm. to share. And, uh, so thank you all for sending in questions. All right. Are you ready for fan questions? Go for it. <laughs> Michael Adam Goodwill from Patreon asks, how did it feel returning to Star Trek after so long? Did it feel like you ne had never left? That's actually a, a, a really good question because it had been quite a few years since uh, since we had worked on, on Star Trek. Mm -hmm. And going back, I'm going, well, God, I, Honestly, it felt like a job when, uh, when 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 I first did it. It was like, well, here's here's a deadline. Here's, here's what we need to do. And um, but then when I stepped onto onto that bridge, when we stepped onto that bridge, suddenly the the, the sensory experience of I spent so many hours here, and then uh, we we vicariously had had participated in all these adventures with uh, with these with these actors and with these characters. Right. So it was. Uh, it ended up being very emotional. I can only imagine. Yeah, all the cast said as much too, and uh, um, Terry Metalis said as much. That um, they all had a moment there when they stepped onto that bridge, you know, mm -hmm. sat in their seats again, or mm -hmm. stood at the horseshoe, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can only hope, darling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead. Well, like my father. <laughs> oh, yeah, no one dies my inside That's right. fiction. <laughs> I've, I've forgotten that. My, my father always said you can wish in one hand and shit in the other. <laughs> See which one fills up first. Oh! <laughs> boom! <laughs> I just got a bomb. Um, Great. Okay, next question. Next question. Stephen Gissinger from Patreon asks, how does it make you feel knowing people use your design aesthetic for actual interfaces on their phones and such at starbase 400 on twitter ads did you ever think you'd see that first of all when you see so that someone likes what you've done enough uh, uh to emulate it that's that's hugely flattering of course <laughs> yeah. i mean it and it, it's it, it's not just that they're loving your stuff it's that they're loving that it was part of a show that that, that they love mm -hmm. so you, you you need you need to get that in mind the other thing is that what we do when uh in the control panels and readouts you you're trying to come up with something that looks like it's 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 authentic that you could really fly a starship but you're also, but you're primarily doing something that needs to fulfill a, a dramatic need, a storytelling need, uh, and 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 a bunch of other technical things. Uh, in fact, designing a real interface is much harder than than what we do. Right. And so I take my hat out, hat off to the to those people who actually take these fanciful things that we've come up with and actually make it work. So the the GUI oh. stuff is real. As it were, graphic user interface—that's real. And your L cars, I mean, uh, the, 
I wasn't trying to design an actual functional interface. I was trying to design something that when you see it on, see it on television, you might think, well, I could fly a starship. Right. Yeah. So, and, that, and that's a trick of drama. You, you're, uh, you know, e- each person involved in filmmaking uh, tries to evoke that in, in, the, in, the, in the audience's mind's mm. eye. Yeah, it's the willful suspension of disbelief. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and if mm-hmm. I can do something that looks credible, and if the actors are operating it credibly, uh, the audience will will. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Well, we're, sometimes we luck out. You're looking at me. <laughs> I wasn't looking at you. <laughs> and and if you if you can do that, then uh, then the audience does suspend its yeah. disbelief. Yeah. And and the fact that so many people uh, seem to seem to like the Elkar style sh- shows that uh, this. It doesn't necessarily show that I designed a user, user interface. It shows that they've suspended the disbelief. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Mm-hmm. Storytelling. Yes, exactly. Yeah. All right. Next question is from Matthew Edmonds from Patreon. What do you consider the biggest compliment you've received about your work? Probably because we are so involved in the space program that we have met so many uh, people from NASA that have said... Um, uh, watching Star Trek changed my life. Yeah, um, that's huge. We, you know, um, we had the pleasure of taking around um, on the non-shooting uh, stages um, uh, um, flight directors and astronauts, um, and they would say how much um, our work meant to them, um, which blows us away because, of course, you know, we're just playing in fantasy land yeah. and they are doing real stuff mm-hmm. so that's probably the highest mm-hmm. uh, compliment so the ins- it's the inspiration isn't it and, yeah. uh, and uh, you know when you watch it as a, as a young person the idea that y- you could actually go into it into it and maybe maybe make that happen mm-hmm. yeah yeah and who knows um, yeah it's early days yeah yeah mm-hmm. that was made really clear to me i went uh, at one point just after our show was over I forget her last name, and I'm sorry, Barbara. You might know her. She she worked at the Goddard Space Center for a very long. Barbara time. Scott. Barbara, Barbara Scott. Scott. Barbara Scott. <laughs> Barbara Scott. Barbara Scott invited me to come to Goddard and you know see the dry room mm. and I think that's what it's called and the mock up of the space shuttle and and then I was so intimidated by this, but they were you know it was we're gonna have a Q and A, me and the brainiacs in the room and 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 she was so she helped us out so well because she said you know who in this room was inspired by star trek to do what they're doing now and and to a person they raised their hands immediately and uh and then i got terrified and ran uh but no i mean the the idea that you know the people that are working on the things that are so extraordinary about about flight and space and yeah. and the space programs and all that have their their inspiration coming from star trek is one humbling i'm sure to you as well uh, and um remarkable and and extraordinary and uh i you know to to have them just raise their hand because star trek was influential to them was just Mind blowing. Yeah. But the thing, the thing with Star Trek, and the thing that keeps coming back for both Mike and I, because we were raised on Star Trek, um, is the optimistic philosophy of the future. Mm. And I can't tell you how many times, especially in the last couple of years, um, we've had to really hold on to that because you look at the world and you go, "Oh All my right. God." Yeah. But we, mm-hmm. but we believe, we do believe that there is hope for the future. And this television series, for crying out loud, Gene Roddenberry's vision um, has changed lives, changed our lives. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mine too. Yeah. <laughs> a, a lot of people describe Star Trek as utopian, and I, and I and I and I disagree because a lot of Star Trek stories say, "What could happen if we make bad choices?" Sure. Yeah. Agreed. But Star Trek says that tomorrow can be a better place if we're smart, mm. if we work together, if we're compassionate, if we're inclusive. Tomorrow can be a better place. Mm. Yep. And, and if we not, listen, and if we listen, and it's not perfect, should. and uh, that's the imperfection that's very interesting. Uh, as I've been watching, yeah, uh, I find that quite uh, telling. Buddy Noonan from Patreon asks, "Who was your mentor, and is there anyone you view as your successors?" My say? mentor was Michael Okuda <laughs> and, and and Liz Radley. Liz Radley. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
mentor would have to be Herman Zimmerman, our yeah. production designer on uh, Star Trek Next Generation. Yeah. Uh, he trusted this inexperienced kid and, uh, and even though I had a lot of ideas which he disagreed with, he said, okay, try that. Yeah. And, uh, what a gift. Uh, are yeah. you in touch with yeah. him? Because we would love to have him on the show. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and I'm sure he would love to. Would love I'd to love be. to. Oh, that would yeah. be so yeah. great. Yeah. Be great. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. Uh, and uh, one of the great gifts that we've had on Star Trek, very seriously, is occasionally you have an opportunity to hire someone mm. and to bring someone in, into, the, into the industry or into the art department that... Uh, loves it as much as you and will bring his or her own spin to it. And I've been, uh, I've been very fortunate to work with people like uh, Doug Drexler and, mm. uh, and um, Anthony Fredrickson and, and Jim Vanover and, um, and Kerry Thomas and... Um, John Eves. And... Uh, uh, well, I didn't hire Eves, but yes. Yeah. And some of these uh, some of these extraordinary people did i mention jeff mandel who was lead graphic designer on picard no, you didn't be sure. uh, uh, he and uh he and these people have uh have, have continued the uh, uh the graphics approach in star trek and if you, if you look at their body of work uh you can't help but be impressed yeah mm -hmm. at ty underscore guy 86 from twitter asks uh i know you both are huge fans of the original series set tour in, mm. in Ticonderoga. Mm -hmm. in, Ticonderoga. in Ticonderoga. Do you have any stories or memories from any of the tours you guided? What is your favorite room on the tour? Well, we recently, uh, we were just there a couple of June. months ago. And um, uh, sometimes uh, Bill Shatner comes by. And uh, for, for whatever reason, he asked us to tag along on, on the tour. And we were standing in the transporter room and he was telling stories and entertaining people. And he said, uh, he, I have no idea why, but he asked us to, to come on stage and, and get just up to the transporter with him. On, onto the transporter and, uh, and to chat. So to kind of just be hanging around in the transporter room with Captain Kirk, that's, uh, <laughs> that's pretty fun. Not I bad. am so jealous right now. <laughs> <laughs> just a, a, a shout out to James Colley, um, who, uh, created the the uh, Star Trek tour in Ticonderoga, New York. Um, it is an extraordinary experience. Cool. If you um, love Star Trek, if you love the original series, uh, to go there and physically be on the sets. I mean, we recreated um, the bridge. Bits and pieces. In bits and pieces. This is... Yeah. Ceilings, floors, the it's, it's the whole thing. It's an immersive wow. experience. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's the entire... Uh, standing Enterprise interior sets from the original Star Trek, mm -hmm. and and of course, as as, as you know, uh, a real a real set, it's almost never entirely there. There's always walls yeah, wilded right. away, or, or people are using it to stand to store C stands or, or, sure. or grip cards <laughs> or things. Right. But here, it's lit. It's it's complete, and there's sound effects, and that's what it must have felt like to walk down the deck of of uh, of the Enterprise. Okay. Have you? Been? Oh, well. No. No, me neither. It's you should go. You should go. Nice. We, we should you absolutely should go. Nice. Yeah, we'll right. talk to James. Uh, yes, um, well, James Colley is, do a show is from there. another amazing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what a thinking, great right? idea! <laughs> um, we'll anyway, get yeah, maybe. Uh, well, I tell you, definitely uh, Walter. Shatner. Well, Walter would definitely. Uh, uh, anyway, we love to one. share our toys, and when, <laughs> yes. and when uh, it's not our toy, but James has been uh, gracious enough to invite us to get come and give tours and stuff. I love watching the faces of people when they walk in the sets, oh, I bet. and they just can't believe it. Mm. I mean, I've had people start crying. I've had people just start shaking and go. I mean, it 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 is an, a visceral experience. Sure, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if you're not necessarily a huge fan of the original Star Trek, to to be there in 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 that in that environment with that that design ethic that oh this was this was a vision of the future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, it's Riles from Instagram asks, "What's your favorite Easter egg from your designs?" Well, I don't know about the favorite Easter egg, but um, uh, on the Enterprise D bridge, um, 
I had these these, these little panel ID labels that I put all, all wherever they would let me put them up. And um, a lot of people know that a lot of those capsule labels had uh, had little jokes on them. So when we recreated the bridge for uh, uh, for Star Trek Picard, I, I, I called Liz Koskowski, the uh, art director, and I said, do you want it with jokes <laughs> or do you want it without? Because remember, this is now in 4K. Yeah. Mm. The originals were done for standard def, so I was pretty comedy. Yeah. You, you'd never you see, a joke. see it. <laughs> so I, uh, but at the same time, I didn't know what they wanted, you know, and it's, it's their set. So Liz couldn't get a straight answer from uh, from whoever she asked. So, and we were running up on deadlines. So I made a set with gags and a set without gags. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I sent it to her and said, "You choose, use whichever one you want." Right, that's awesome. So Liz was prudently worried about what you might see in 4K. So she gave the order: no gags. Mm. They didn't listen. Oh, no. So when I walked onto the set, I went, oh, Liz went with all the gags. <laughs> That's great. And she didn't, uh, and, 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 you know, and, you know, she's an art director, so she's got 10 million things to do at the same time. So yeah. she actually never noticed that, that the gags were there. I know you've interviewed her, but she's an amazing oh, person. She's, awesome. yeah. she's amazing. We had her a couple yeah. weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. She only mentioned uh, in the arm of the yeah. captain's chair that there was something in the in the, yes. the flip-up. Yes. That's all she was. So what, are they, what are the other gags? And, <laughs> um, in, in, the, uh, um, in all the little control icons, the, 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 the little fake buttons, yeah. those... Um, Either have numeric codes, and a lot of them have alpha, uh, of, of alpha codes, uh, lettering codes, and in most cases, in many cases, those were the initials of people who worked on the um, mm. on the show. That's right, very nice. And there were a lot of repeats. So when when we did the uh, the recreation for Picard, I kept the original um, uh, production personnel from Star Trek: Next Generation. But in some cases, I replaced them with, uh, uh, I added uh, people who worked on, on Picard. <laughs> and and you always think, well, no, one, no one's ever going to know. I mean, not even the people, because the production people, they're, you know, you're, you're working and you're, in, you're, you're, you're stressed and everything. Mm -hmm. but everybody noticed. Really? And um, I had actually made an effort to put Everyone I, I could find who worked on the on the crew. That's <laughs> awesome. I missed some of the construction personnel. Oh no! <laughs> and they're really important. <laughs> yeah. So Liz comes up to me and says, "Is there any way you you can do it?" And the, and the set was already built. The graphics are already in place. So, but because the control panels were uh, some of the control panels were actual video OLED displays. I changed. You could pop them up. Right. I, 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 I just changed it. I, I emailed it to uh, uh, our friends at Twisted Media, and they, they, they emailed it to uh, uh, to Ben Betts, and there it was on set. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Was Ben video? Yeah. Ben? Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Todd Marks was <laughs> Todd Marks uh, was really? supervisor. Uh, supervisor. Yeah. Uh, ben Betts. Ben Betts was key engineer. Larry Markart. Larry Markart. Who, uh, I'm, oh, I'm sure you've worked with yeah. that. Yeah. 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 It was like old home week. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Just not us. <laughs> <laughs> it was called Picard. <laughs> no documentary. No respect. <laughs> Next question. All right. <laughs> I sad. I sad. <laughs> Uh, Neil Owen James Cochran from Facebook asks, uh, first of all, thanks for basically designing my childhood. Uh-oh. <laughs> Sweet. Secondly, was there a specific point in your careers when you realized the impact you were having on society and real-life technology designs? What was it and how did it feel? You have to understand that ooh, both of us were lifelong Star Trek fans. So from the very beginning, you, you kind of knew that if the show is successful... The things that you're doing, people are gonna are gonna see it, mm -hmm. and you don't design things because you want to uh, to change. You you design things because this is what the production needs, right? And uh, that's. But uh, a few years ago, we were at um, 
uh, the uh, Subaru Astronomical Observatory on uh, on Mauna Kea. Oh, awesome! Yeah, and you know, it's, uh, a telescope because it can see thousands, even millions, even billions of light years in, uh, uh, away. It's literally a time machine, and it's a starship. So one of the uh, one of the telescope technicians showed it uh, was showing us the software he used uses it to drive the telescope, mm -hmm. and and he is very proud of the fact that it. That that his software was uh, was patterned after Star Trek's Elcar's design. <laughs> wow. That's awesome! So wow. cool. Icky, travel gal for you from Patreon. <laughs> Some of these. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Don't be. It's not. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not I, 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 She's a Patreon on the day. <laughs> I'm, I'm in no. I, you, I am no way. I just, that's her name. They're man. funny. <laughs> travel girl, keep it up. All right. <laughs> uh, Icky travel gal for you from Patreon asks: Would you consider designing a patch for Shuttle Pod Show Patreon? Oh. oh. Mm. Would you consider? Oh. Oh. <laughs> I think you better call. say yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Give, give, give us a call. Okay. Yeah, right. You'll never Great. leave. <laughs> Doors are locked. We have the keys. By by the way, uh, in uh, I forget what the episode was where we had it was a next generation episode. We had a very small shuttlecraft, and for some reason, uh, we needed a name for it. And I I coined the name Shuttle Pod. Did you? No did. kidding. Oh, I yeah. no, no, didn't know that, dude. <laughs> well, well, well. Well, thank you. We owe you a dead thanks. That's right. But not we, any money. Don't we, will take, <laughs> we will take the emblem. <laughs> uh, get on it. You've got till next weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Pressure's on. That's, that's a cool fact. Look at you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's great. Um, is um, it time? For trivia. For trivia. We're going to win, by the way. We might. We've got a good chance. If we don't, I mean, honestly, we've got a good Mark chance. Mark knows everything. Yeah. Was there another question? No, I just want to say thank you to the Random Red Shirt podcast, uh, Zach and Chris. We thank always you say thank you. For doing our trivia. You. They help with trivia. So. Thank you, guys. You guys are awesome. Are you guys ready for some Star Trek trivia? Yes, oh. yes, yes. Oh, okay. I don't know. So today it's you four. No pressure, guys. Put against it. producer Mark. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's multiple choice. Okay. And today we are playing for a new Patreon member, Stephanie Baker. Thank you, Stephanie. Stephanie, Stephanie. Stephanie. We're going to win you Thank tomorrow. You. And Mark's playing for? I'm playing for our newest, most current Patreon member, uh, who, as of right this second, is Matt Boardman. So oh, thank you for becoming a Hey, Matt. Hey, Matt. We, we know Matt. Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Shout out, Matt. Five questions. Here we go. Question number one. In Voyager, what part of the ship did Ensign Kim help Seven of Nine upgrade? A, the bridge. B, the astrometrics lab. C, engineering, or D, sickbay? Yes. Damn. Uh, Astrometrics lab. Yes. Damn. Uh, I was nervous. I, I, I need, need to get, get some buzzer wings. <laughs> 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 All right. Oh, thank uh, God. <laughs> question number two. What class starship was the Enterprise C? A, galaxy class. Wait. <laughs> Wait for it. I know this too. <laughs> buzzer race. <laughs> A, Galaxy class, B, Constitution class, C, Ambassador class, or D, Sovereign class? Mark, yes, oh, Mark, 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 yes. <laughs> Mother of invention. Uh, 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 ambassador class. Yes, thank God. Damn. So I'm nervous. This is the first time I've been nervous. Connor, does he have your... <laughs> yes, he's got my button. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's just Question Don't call three. it a comeback. <laughs> On him. In which original series episode was Spock blinded? A. Is there in truth no beauty? B. Operation Annihilate? C. A taste of Armageddon? Or D. The alternative factor? Oh. Yes, yeah. we got it. There it is. Do we know? Who knows? Operation Annihilate. Operation Annihilate. Yes! yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's real. This Question is a real one. Question number four. <laughs> Question number four. In first contact, what ship did Picard say he saw hundreds of times in the Smithsonian but was never able to touch? Mark, 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 mark. A, the Phoenix, B, USS Constitution, C, USS Enterprise, or D, Mars One? See, I'm pretty good at this. Ah. <laughs> do, you know, do you guys know no? We do. Oh, yes, good. say it. 
uh, in Phoenix. In Phoenix. Oh. Oh. Too old. <laughs> and he touches it, and Data asks him if physical contact with inanimate objects brings uh, joy or whatever. What is it about that? It's a great scene. Mm-hmm. And you're not supposed to st- touch stuff at the Smithsonian. Oh. <laughs> That's a rule. Did you learn that? <laughs> uh, we worked with the Smithsonian. Yeah. With um, the uh, Enterprise D. Uh, yeah. um, no, the original series the, Enterprise. The TOS yeah. Enterprise. Yeah. Yeah. Denise asked if she could touch the uh, touch the saucer of the original Enterprise. Yeah. And uh, uh, Margaret Weidekamp, the uh, curator, said, sure, put these gloves on. We put gloves on. <laughs> white gloves? Didn't yeah, you white work gloves. In, in sort of restoring that in some yes. way? Yeah, you yeah. did, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, we were in the advisory yeah. committee. We were in the yeah. advisory oh. committee. The, the original 13-foot, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know Charlie Dayton, whose dad designed. Uh, Richard Dayton. Richard Dayton. Richard Dayton, yeah. Richard Dayton. Charlie, 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 yeah. You know, Built the, it. The cruise design. Oh, yeah, the cruise yeah, design yeah. I get invited on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Charlie does them, uh, and his dad, yeah. God bless. Wow. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. That. Small, what a small, small world. world. Yeah. I, I, I chatted with uh, Richard Dayton once. Uh, I, I, we were working on a book that never happened, but uh, he, uh, he built the uh, uh, Petticoat Junction. He built the Cannonball Express. No oh, way. Wow, wow, wow. Well, which, wow. Was a, which was a miniature. God, the only time I went to the Smithsonian, and I, I've told, I may have told this story once before, but we were standing in front of the pictures of the moon landing uh, and there was a chap standing next to me and he was muttering and he was a horse sh- all completely fake and I looked at him and then he started getting into me and I said well at least he didn't have to pay to get in <laughs> <laughs> good comeback oh that's awesome that, that's uh, awesome <laughs> it's all right <laughs> Anyway, next question. We're tied okay. two to two. Two to two. Oh, All it's right. real. <laughs> Here we go. Question number five. The droppings of Dr. Flox's Altarian marsupial have what highly prized property? A, they stop the Vulcan mating urge, the pond far. B, they cure Andorian shingles. C, they contain regenerative enzymes. Or D, they make an excellent coffee alternative. Mark, 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 yes! He got it. It's the regenerative uh, it, it, It's C. It's the regenerative enzyme. Oh, uh, sorry, is, guys. Uh, <laughs> Damn you! Ah, Damn your eyes! This is the first time I've ever taken oh, no, the buzzer super serious. <laughs> <laughs> because I knew you guys were going to sweep the floor with Damn, me. I knew that one. No. Well, uh, uh, it's, not, it's not your fault this week. I'm sure you guys had every answer. But uh, you did still uh, team celebrities lose. Oh. For uh, Stephanie Baker, <laughs> so, yeah, wow, with, with sorry, pride I hear in the voice. <laughs> you get a car, uh, and uh, uh, I won uh, for uh, your friend uh, Matt, Matt uh, Boardman. So yeah, congratulations, congratulations, Matt Boardman. Thank you, Matt. Hey, congrats, congrats, congrats. Thanks for, coming on. Thanks for joining us. Remember. Take a leaf out of Matt's book, people. Thank you very much. And now it's time for stuck on an island with Connor Trenier. Well, so you're stuck on a deserted island comma with your host connor trenier um so he's not there i'm not there <laughs> he's the host of the segment fortunately so the both of you are <laughs> now how do we do this now is it individual answers or collective answers oh we I should make we should them go... decide a oh, one I think, oh i think oh i'd go no, individual individual yeah. they're there together I... but, yeah. you're on you're so, on so adjacent how... islands <laughs> you're on the same island you actually you've got your bonus item yeah. <laughs> uh so you are given the works of shakespeare you are given the religious text of your choice, and you have to select your cuisine, which if you choose like Mexican food, you get all the Mexican food. Your author, same thing, you get the collected works. Musician slash composer, all of their works. And um, what dessert. else? Dessert. And how could I forget dessert? Mm. Like if you pick pie, you get all pies, all flavors. And then you get a bonus item. I'm not sure you guys get a bonus item because you have each other, but um... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think uh, I think that's when you need the bonus. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we'll machetes. go uh, individually. You're yes, bad. each one of you. So um, your author, Arthur C. Clarke. Oh, how would it go? Another choice. What about you, uh, Mike? No, oh, she's going Clark. I'll, I'll go as Asimov. Oh, oh, see nice. these guys they get it they, yeah. they get a dream island now. yeah uh your cuisine pizza 
Is that a cuisine? You yeah, could say you're Italian. 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 You're not the yeah. first person. I don't, know, I don't like uh, Italian. I love pizza. Uh, okay. Pizza. New York. All pizzas. <laughs> Sli- New all York. I, what kind of pizza know. do you like? <laughs> Is it New York, Chicago? What style? Everything. I oh, just well, pizza. Here's a you get I love pizza. pizza. Uh, yeah, yeah. How do you feel about uh, pineapple and ham? I love it. Okay. All right. All right. That, there you go. Oh, then so we're going to get. We're going to get. get, 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 get a lot of talk on that. How dare you put pineapple on a pizza? I used to love the Akutas. I'm done with this show. What about Mike? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go with Japanese cuisine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, there you go. I'll look at you. You guys are on a great island. Uh, your musician slash composer? Uh, Paul McCartney. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The Beatles. You could even or, the Beatles. Just Paul. or the Beatles. Yeah, the uh, Beatles. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I, was gonna go with, I was going to go with that band. This That old band. That old band. That, the Beatles as well. Uh, you could pick something else because you guys have two choices. But the Beatles, I agree. Beatles are mine as well. And your dessert. Oh, I love cheesecake. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, old cheesecake. All flavors mm. of cheesecake. You like apple pie. Pie. Apple pie. So all pies. pies. See? Yeah. Pies. Now here's here okay, so your your bonus item. Now it can be it can't get you off the island. Um for instance, uh, <laughs> I was using an example. <laughs> Jimmy Darren chose a Ferrari. Yeah. On his little with a island. machete in the trunk. <laughs> but, but you could pick no. something like you know a hammock or some, some bonus item that uh, uh, makes you happy. Can I it's a luxury, a, you know. Can I pick a holodeck? Does it work? I mean, oh. this is a fake island. I I pick a holodeck so I can sure. not be on the island. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't think you're the first person to say that. I think no, somebody yeah. said that yeah. once. A holodeck's a good a good one. Uh, Michael? Yeah. Phone. Yeah. Well, look at well, you What two. would you do? I mean, okay, are we allowing a phone? Cause you, you, Listen, we, AT&T allow- covers the entire... But you, we don't want... Well, you can't talk to people. You didn't say that. No, we oh. just said you can't. You said you can't leave, you leave the island, or I would have said transporter. All right, all right. All right. Uh, Which yeah. would have been a good... Yeah. I'm coming to your guys' island. Yeah, no, you're no. very welcome. I'm very Come close. Come on over. Right. We're all very. We're an archipelago. Wait, wait, what, what kind of food do you have in your island? Uh, Mexican. Okay, Ooh. you're you're allowed. Yeah. Okay, oh. thank you. We're all with, the the with, with the margaritas. With the margaritas. With the margaritas. Exactly. Okay, I like Best that. Best margarita. I like no, that. The R.I.O. Grande. Yeah. Um, no, it makes me feel bad. And I mean, I'm sure I said red wine. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome too. Then. <laughs> and, and if they brought a crate of Guinness, crate of Guinness now and again, that wouldn't hurt. Either. It wouldn't hurt. <laughs> you know, for the sundown. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's been an absolute uh, joy yeah. having you guys on. It's been great. Thank you so Thank much you for coming on. Thank you, yeah. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Uh, uh, we almost forgot. Uh, do you like wine? Do you like yes. wine? Yes. All right. Do you prefer Pinot Noir or what was the other one? Cabernet. Cabernet. We have a lovely Patreon member, uh, too, but Sean and Chris, they have a, a, a vineyard up in uh, San Jose called the Alamitos. Their family designs all the uh, wow. labels. All the artwork. Yes. Very nice artwork. Well, thank label. you. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, this is a bottle of Cabernet from Alamitos Vineyards in San Jose. There you very go. nice. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you, Sean and Chris. Thank for your you, pizza. Thank you much. <laughs> for our pizza, right. Yeah, for your pizza. That's nice. <laughs> but again, I mean, really blessed to, to have you here and uh, spend delight. some time with well, you. Well, we really enjoyed it. Yeah, we miss you guys. You. Likewise. I mean, likewise. Yeah. We miss you. Yeah, we get it's to see you. good to see you on the, the picket line, by the way, just so oh, we yes. all we are back on that page for a second. Yeah. Uh, we were all there at Paramount. It's a strange mixed bag. Strange wasn't reason, it? but if we do not stick together, no. if we don't, if we do not hang together, we will, we will most certainly hang separately. As well, that is yeah. Yeah. exactly right. Yeah. Um, it's important to be fair to the people who do the work, to the people who uh, who without whom this stuff could not happen. The uh, the actors, the writers, and for all of us who enjoy your work so much, we can't help but support. Thank you, man. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the faces of these franchises. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. The Akutas! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Thank you. Like. Subscribe. Join us on Patreon.